Good evening, everybody. Everybody loves shrimp, right? Yeah, you know, those shrimp, those shrimp, those glorious shrimp, they're so sweet, they're crunchy, they're succulent, they're firm but tender and crisp. They sort of pique your appetite and your culinary curiosity. I don't know about you, but I feel very decadent when I eat shrimp. So how many of you love to eat shrimp? Oh my gosh, everybody here. Well, you're in the right place tonight. So I think, do you think you would eat more shrimp if you knew where they came from? How to choose them? How to cook them? How healthy they are for you? Do you think you'd eat more? Well, you're in luck tonight because those are the topics that I'll be speaking about and then some. Look at these cute shrimp walking along the bottom there. So we're gonna learn all about them tonight. All right, so we're gonna start off with just a little bit of shrimp trivia. In the United States, shrimp happens to be the number one seafood that everybody eats. And people eat about four pounds per person per year. Do you think you eat more than that a year? Some people do and some people don't. So it's an average. And so if you think about it, if you took everybody that lives in the United States, at four pounds per person, that would be 1.3 billion pounds eaten per year. That's a lot of shrimp, isn't it? And of those shrimp, about 80% are imported into the United States, and about 20% of those, of course, are either landed here as wild or they're aquacultured. So we're gonna learn more about that, um, certainly as we move on through the presentation. But before we do that, we need to take care of the twist part of the title. And so, you know, when I think of lemons, right, I think of seafood. That's what I think of when I think of lemons, right? Wonderful seafood and salmon and oysters and crabs and shrimp. And so, but I also, when I think of a twist, like this twist here. I got really fascinated about twists over the holidays. Don't ask me why, but I did. And I just started practicing making twists. And so I'm gonna show you how to make a lemon twist. And Brian Cousin is here, our videographer, and he's gonna help you see how to make a lemon twist. So first you take a lemon, and you can cut it in half like this. And then you take a slice of the lemon, like that, and you make a cut through the middle of it and through one end of the rind, so it's like that. And then you go around the outer edge, like this, all the way around. And of course you can use the inside part for cooking. All right, so here we go. So I have something else I have to show you. This is what I really learned. That a twist is really good <laughs> for a martini, right? So you take the piece of lemon rind and you make a curly cue like this. And then you pull it like that and you rub it around the rim. And look at that, you've got a nice twist for your martini. So cheers. <laughs> it's really just water. I wish it was martini. Okay, so that's just getting us warmed up. I have a few more shrimp facts to talk with you about. There's over 2,000 different species of shrimp. Now, of course, they're not all edible shrimp. Some are really small, and some are aquarium-type ornamental shrimp on the reefs. There's probably about a, a couple dozen different types of shrimp that are eaten. And then they're an invertebrate, which means that they don't have a backbone. Like a fish has a backbone, we have backbones. And they have this thing called an exoskeleton, which is the outside shell of the shrimp. And that's how they grow. They, they shed their shell or their exoskeleton and they molt and then they grow a new one. And that's the same with lobsters and crabs and all those crustaceans. And shrimp live just about in any water habitat. They live in freshwater, 
They live in brackish water like the lagoon, our Indian River Lagoon. They live in the ocean. And they're what's called omnivorous, which most of us probably in the room are om omnivores, right? We eat plants and we eat also animals. So shrimp do the same. And they, they pick away at different algae and plant particles and little zooplankton or little tiny fish. But they're also food for other animals. So they might be um, for other fish, for crabs, for sea urchins, starfish, birds, whales eat a type of crustacean, a shrimp, and also dolphins and sharks. And they play a very important part of the balance of our ecosystem in the sea. So just a little brief life history here. The adults go out to the ocean to to breed or to reproduce, and the female carries her eggs under her swimmerettes here, and she carries thousands of eggs, and she releases them into the open ocean, where they float around, they hatch out as little larvae, you can see the little nauplii and zoea and lysa stage, and they keep molting and growing for about 21 days, and then they migrate back into the estuary area where they make their home as little juveniles, and so just like the Indian River Lagoon is a nursery, it's a nursery for shrimp as well. You probably are asking yourself, what's the difference between shrimp and prawns? Right, you hear that term a lot, so some say shrimp, some say prawns. The difference biologically is that they have some different gill structure. But we probably don't really see that when we're out shopping for shrimp. So really, if you go to different geographic areas in the, in the world, in England and Australia, they often say prawns. They're often big shrimp. In the United States, we say jumbo shrimp. So we don't necessarily use the term prawn. But I do want to bring your attention to this guy here. This is actually a freshwater prawn. So oftentimes, freshwater shrimp, such as this one here called a macrobrachium, is called a prawn. So if we think about the fisheries of shrimp in the United States, most of the shrimp comes from the Gulf of Mexico, and then also the Pacific Ocean, and then about 5% comes from the Atlantic coast, okay, the, our, our eastern seaboard and on up, and a little bit comes from the New England area. There's almost 300 million pounds of shrimp that's harvested every year from the natural environment and 15 million pounds from our state alone. So I'm going to show you some shrimp that are wild caught shrimp so that you can kind of get an idea of the different types of shrimp when you go to a seafood market or you go to a grocery store. You might say, well, I wonder what the difference between this shrimp and that shrimp is. So I'm going to um, show you a little bit of information on that as well. So this shrimp here is called a white shrimp. And it is from the eastern seaboard of the United States. Sometimes you might have heard of it um, called a Mayport shrimp. So they're harvested off the coast of Jacksonville, but they're also harvested in the Gulf of Mexico. These are harvested during this time of year. That's why you can find them in the grocery store. And they pretty much harvested in, February, excuse me, in the fall and also in, in the wintertime. I want to tell you about whether to buy fresh or frozen shrimp. Okay, so when you go to the grocery store and you see the seafood counter and you see all this fresh shrimp there, it's actually fresh frozen. And so what they've done is they've taken the, taken the shrimp that's in the freezer and they've defrosted it. And it really only has a shelf life of maybe one or two days. So my recommendation to you is to actually buy the frozen shrimp. And that way you'll know that it's actually fresher than what is actually in the counter itself. Unless you know that it came right off the boat um, I would say nine times out of ten or more, it's going to be already frozen and that they've just defrosted it for you. And um, then you can also look in the bag and see if it's individually quick frozen. So that means that maybe you buy a two pound bag of shrimp and you just want a few out of it. You're just making a, a supper for a couple of you. Um, so when they're individually quick frozen and you can look through the clear plastic, and you can see and you can pull out just what you need for that evening and put the rest back in the freezer. That's a little handy tip. Okay, so you've got the white shrimp that we just talked about and then you've got the brown shrimp. And the brown shrimp are pretty much found during the summertime. That's why I don't have any here for you. And they're about 20% of the catch in Florida. 
and they live in a little deeper down to maybe about 180 feet and a little saltier um, uh, environment than the white shrimp. And then you've got, I do have some of these here, then you've got the Key West pinks. So the pink in color, you know, obviously by their name, they're found a lot in very clear water around the Florida Keys and into the Gulf of Mexico. And so they're a very, very popular shrimp. And then we've got something called the royal red. Can you see they're a little darker red than the Florida, um, than the Key West pinks? Now these shrimp grow in very deep water, and so very cold water. And because of that, whenever you eat something from colder water, it actually tastes almost a little bit more like a lobster. And so these are quite a delicacy, these shrimp. And then these ones over here are the rock shrimp. They have a really hard exoskeleton. Like, and these are collected off the um, coast of Cape Canaveral area, also in very deep water. And then these guys at the very end are called blue shrimp or diamond blue shrimp, and they're harvested in the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. And they're very popular, popular shrimp. You can actually see they have a couple different sizes here. Look at this guy. That's a jumbo shrimp for sure, right? Look how big that is compared to my hand. So that's definitely a jumbo shrimp. So those are some of the shrimp that you will likely find in your grocery store that are locally caught in the United States. And those are going to be some of your most popular shrimp there. And what I'd like to do right now is introduce my colleague, John Reed. And he's a research professor here at Harbor Branch. And he's going to talk with you this evening about sustainable fishing practices. Thank you, John. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to take a lot of time. We need to get to the important part, which is cooking and eating. <laughs> right. Plus, the, the Food Network and Rachel Ray are supposed to show up any minute now, so we want to get ready for that. So anyway, commercial fisheries are an important part of the economy. Um, last year, the commercial fisheries, fishers, um, landed over $5 billion of seafood. There's a lot of seafood, $5 billion worth. Well, it's very important for these fisheries to maintain a safe and healthy and sustainable fishery. First, you have to have good management, management by the fishers themselves, as well as the Fishery Management Council to have good management of each fishery. Each fishery needs to be sustainable. That means that you don't overfish the species. So there's always enough uh, adults to grow up and have spawn and have baby shrimp and other fish. And finally, the fisheries should not hurt the environment. Unfortunately, some fisheries do not abide by these practices. Some of the worst are bottom trawling, where they damage the bottom habitat. Off of Norway, 50% of the deep water reefs have been devastated from bottom trawling. And right here off of Florida, right off of Treasure Coast, the deep water reefs have been decimated by rock shrimp trawling, which is, which is a real shame because what we have is this incredible deep water coral reef that's providing habitat for fish and fin fish and other species. A bottom trawl is made to go on the bottom. The, the net, net itself is about 200 feet wide and is held open by two very, very heavy doors that weigh about a ton. So these are drug across the bottom to keep the net low on the bottom to catch these shrimp. Forty years ago, forty years ago next month, I started at Harbor Branch and we had just discovered this deep water coral reef called Oculina Coral right off the coast of Florida. And that's what I first started working on and I've been working on it for forty years. 
What was incredible about these reefs, they occur in about 300 foot of water. They're 60 feet tall. Imagine that, a six story tall building covered with big bushes of coral. Unfortunately, the trawlers had gone through there with chains and knocked down the coral, destroying the habitat for the fish. The healthy habitat provides habitat for thousands of fish, many of which actually live in the Indian River Lagoon, such as scamp and gag grouper. Baby juvenile scamp and gag grouper live in the grass beds and mangroves, and as they mature, they work their way out and end up on the deep water reefs where they spawn. Well, one of the first discoveries that I made was that these reefs are truly unique and occur only here and nowhere else on Earth. And so at this time in the early 80s, we knew the fisheries, the bottom trawlers were starting to come in and fish these reefs. So I petitioned the Fishery Management Council to close the area to bottom trawling. Not to hook and line fishing, but to bottom trawling. So in 1984, this was designated a marine protected area, which was the first uh, marine protected area in the world to protect a deep water coral reef. Later, it was expanded up to Cape Canaveral. And even 30 years later, we're still making discoveries. In 2011, um, <coughs> Stephanie Farrington, my research assistant, and I were on a cruise and discovered that these reefs actually go all the way up to St. Augustine. And so we worked with Fishery Management Council for the next three years and were able to have the entire area designated a marine protected area and to prevent and prohibit bottom trawling. So enable the coral to, to live and thrive. Unfortunately, much of the area had already been destroyed from long lines and bottom trawling. This is a healthy reef. I took this picture in 1978 with the Johnson Sea Link submersible. This is the same reef I took a picture in 2001. The coral was completely crushed. There's no habitat for the fish. So this is a short video that Brian Cousin and I put together from our old videotapes, as well as recent videotapes.
John, thank you so much for the good work you do. I really appreciate it. One alternative to eating wild-caught shrimp is to eat aquacultured shrimp. And so, as I said earlier, 57% of the shrimp that we eat today is, is aquacultured. And many of the farms are certified um, as good farms to eat from. And they're certified with these type of certifications like Responsible Farmed or the um, ASC Farm, Nature Land, also Aquaculture Best Practices. And so you do have some healthy choices um, and sustainable choices. And as John said, you also have some sustainable choices for where your wild-caught shrimp comes from as well. And if we do a little bit of a recap here, in 2013, the U.S. imported 80% of the shrimp into the United States. And as I had said earlier, about 1.3, 1.4 billion pounds of shrimp come into the United States each year. So it's a combination of the imported and the domestic. The domestic is, in aquaculture, it's only about 12 million pounds. There's about 100 farms in the United States right now. So you can see there's lots of room for expansion of aquaculture in, in the United States. And um, there's um, about the 300 million pounds wild caught which comes from the, the various uh, shrimp fisheries that I, I told you about. I know it's very, can be very uh, maybe challenging to be able to choose what your healthiest seafood is. Um, the Seafood Watch, which is the seafoodwatch.org website out of Monterey Bay Aquarium, has put together, and they do something for every single seafood that's out there. And they tell you what's the best, in this case, shrimp to eat, the 27 good alternatives to eat, and then the ones that you should avoid. So it's not so much the shrimp that they're telling you about. It usually can be a combination of the shrimp, but it's also the farming practice or the fishing practice. And so you can go on that website, and actually we gave you a card tonight that also has some information that you can use as a reference guide when you go to eat in a restaurant or when you go um, out to... Um, to the restaurant, excuse me, to the restaurant or the seafood counter. Um, you'll know what, you know what the good choices are. So one of the best choices for aquaculture, and you'll see this in the Seafood Watch, is an aquaculture that does what's called recirculating aquaculture. And that means that it reuses its water over and over again and that there's very minimal or even zero discharge of that water. And this is done on some of the inland farms, and it's also done in some of the pond facilities. And it's also shrimp that's grown without antibiotics and chemicals. So unfortunately, some of our shrimp from overseas has a fair amount of um, antibiotics or chemicals. Not all of them do, but, but, the ones, but, but, there are, but that does exist. And so you want to start to figure out, you know, use your resources, and then that way when you go to the Go to the store, you'll be able to say, well, these are the ones that I always want to buy because I, I really trust that brand. So I'm very happy to let you know that in our own state, just up the street from here, is the Florida Organic Aquaculture Facility. And it's an inland shrimp farm, but the shrimp are grown in salt water. And they are located in Felsmere. So really only about 35 miles up the street from here. It's actually the largest indoor shrimp farm in the world, right in our own backyard. This is one of their production facilities. It's a quarter of a mile in length. It's, it's covered, there's 4.3 acres covered. And it's, if you want to think of three football fields, that's how big this one production unit is, where they're going to have eight of these total by the time that they built out their facilities. They have a second one under production right now. And as I mentioned, they do use salt water. They dug a very deep well, 2,300 feet deep. So it brings in beautiful, clean salt water into, into the building to grow the shrimp. They're also what's called vertically integrated. So that means that they have the brood stock, which you saw in the film at the very beginning. And the brood stock you know, have the eggs, they have the larval system, so they have a hatchery, they have a nursery facility, and the grow out, they do processing, and then they also sell. So they're totally vertically integrated. 
This is inside one of the buildings. There's 20 raceways in there, and each raceway has 500,000 shrimp in there. And each building produces 1.1 million pounds of shrimp a year. So by the time they're fully built out, that's 9 million pounds of shrimp a year, which is almost double what the United States is growing right now. So it's very exciting that we have this sustainable shrimp farm just down the street from us. So the, the shrimp go through their whole larval cycle, and then these are the little post larvae. And when they get to be about a gram in size, they get put into these raceway systems. And this is a close-up of one of the raceways, and you'll see that it's nice and rich in color. And that's a good thing, because shrimp, as I told you earlier, are omnivores. So they like to eat algae, and they also eat um, some of the protein that comes from something called a bioflock. And the bioflock is made by feeding it with molasses, and the nutrients in the water make this amazing food source for the shrimp to be able to, to live on. And then they also add some pellet food in there as well. And so the shrimp take about 21 days in their larval cycle, 21 days in the nursery, and then about 90 days in grow out. So in five months, you can have a shrimp ready to eat. So that means that you can actually have two crops a year out of this facility. And look at those happy, healthy shrimp, which is uh, what Florida Organic Aquaculture names um, their shrimp. These are beautiful, very large, um, fresh shrimp that are grown there. And I do want to let you know that in your brochure today, they provided a 10% discount. Um, so you'll be able to go up and visit them in Felsmere and be able to buy some fresh shrimp. I uh, want to thank Florida Organic Aquaculture because they provided me the shrimp today. Um, what we're going to use for our cooking session. And we have Florida Organic Aquaculture over here, so thank you all so much for growing wonderful shrimp. So I just want to give you a little bit of information on how they process the shrimp. It's um, done very simply. It's taken out of, out of the raceways. It's then put in an ice slushy bath so that it goes down to temperature immediately. And then it's um, cleaned using ozonated water, which means um, a lot more oxygen in the water. And then they, they use very little preservatives. They actually only use vitamin C or ascorbic acid to just help to um, preserve the shrimp. This is wonderful. It means they don't grow it with antibiotics, they don't grow it with chemicals, and there's minimal processing. So you can't get anything better than that. This is not their processing plant, but I wanted to show you what a processing plant looks like. And it's usually one that um, is able to dehead the shrimp or take the, take the exoskeleton off, take the tail off, devein, et cetera. And you're going to get to see some examples of these shrimp today. Before we get to cooking, I have to turn to my favorite, all-time favorite Forrest Gump, Bubba Gump, because he's going to tell us all the different ways that you can cook shrimp. And so let's listen to Bubba for a minute. Anyway, like I was saying, shrimp is the fruit of the sea. You can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, bake it, saute it. There's um, shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried, deep fried, stir fried. There's pineapple shrimp, lemon shrimp, coconut shrimp, pepper shrimp, cave shrimp. Shrimp stew, shrimp salad, shrimp and potatoes, shrimp burger. Cave shrimp. That's, that's about it. <laughs> I just love that. Oh my gosh. Before we get started with our cooking, if you don't remember anything at all from this lecture, I want you to know how to cook the perfect shrimp. So the perfect shrimp looks like this, the letter C. The overcooked shrimp is very tight and looks like a circle, like an O. And so tonight, we're going to make sure that we cook the perfect shrimp. And so you're going to help me along the way. And um, it's really quite easy. The one most important thing about cooking <laughs> shrimp, or for that matter, any seafood that you cook, is that you keep an eye on it. You definitely don't walk away. And I'm very fanatic about that. In fact, I probably keep too good of an eye on it. But um, we're going to learn how to cook shrimp tonight. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to i got to find my other martini glass because we're going to cook shrimp cocktail. And I don't know if you know this, but the reason that shrimp cocktail got its name is because of the prohibition. And there wasn't any drinking to be had in the cocktail glasses. So what did they do? They ate shrimp out of the cocktail glasses, so that's how it got its name. So I have made a Louisiana cocktail sauce this morning, and if you look at your recipes, you'll be able to see all the yummy, yummy ingredients in it, and actually, I think the most secret ingredient in it is this thing here, the celery. So you chop it up really finely. I happen to have a little bullet at home, so I put it all in the bullet, and it made this gorgeous cocktail sauce. And you know what? It reminds me of Bloody Mary's. It's really, really good because of the celery in it. And I was just in New Orleans recently, and I just got turned on to Bloody Mary's, so I just love the fact that this Louisiana hot, hot you know, this Louisiana cocktail sauce kind of reminds me of that as well. So, okay. I'm going to need another lemon to decorate with. Oh, we got some good hot boiling water here, Chris. Thanks for your tips earlier. It's like, make sure it's really hot. See, shrimp cook pretty fast, really. They can, fresh shrimp can actually cook in about, I don't know, about 90 seconds. So we're going to time it tonight. When do you want to be my timer? Yeah. Okay, we're going to put a sprig of parsley in here. Find a nice sprig. Here we go. It's already starting to look pretty, isn't it? Okay. We got our plate cooled down. Okay. That is a boiling pot of water. Now this pot is really great. I don't know if you all have a pot like this, but it's got a steamer basket like this, and then it's also got a boiling basket in it. And um, I'm just really, I'm in love with this pot. I don't know why, but it's just the best pot in the world. Okay, so we need to get our shrimp. And okay, so these shrimp, if you take a, take a look at it here, there you go. You can see that it's been deveined, it's been peeled, but you can see that the tail's still there. And those are the type of shrimp that you want to look for for cocktail cooking um, with a little tail. These shrimp, as I said, are all from, these are all the happy, healthy shrimp from Florida Organic Aquaculture. No artificial preservatives, no chemicals, no antibiotics. And these were just harvested this morning. So isn't that exciting? So we're going to go ahead and put them in here. Somebody start the timer. What's that? Got me covered? Good. Okay. So the one thing about shrimp is you need rapidly boiling water when you're steaming them. And we're going to let them sit for a minute. You can tell me when 30 seconds is up. We're going to see if they cook in 90 seconds with a rapidly boiling pot. I was telling Chris, Chris, they took me five minutes to cook, but I kept opening the container all the time. He's like, of course, the steam's coming out. 30 seconds, I got to look. <laughs> oh, look, see, they're starting to turn pink. See, the tails are starting to turn pink. They look beautiful. So, you know, really, you can, it can take you a little longer to cook, just as long as you don't overcook them. So we'll put the pot, the lid back on again. Let it cook a little longer. While it's cooking, I forgot to tell you about this cool instrument. You know the channel knife? Any of you bartenders? This is a knife that you can use to make lemon twists with. But actually, I like the other method better. But they're kind of cool, right? OK. I'm starting to turn some more. You see that? 20, another 20 it was? A oh, minute 20. So I don't think it's going to be a 90-second cook on this one. I want to keep turning it so that 
so that everything gets covered as soon as they're pink, they're done. And remember that shrimp and seafood keep cooking even after you take them out. And that's why we're going to pop them in the ice over there, cool it down. Excuse me? No, nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. No lemon, no nothing. Not when you're steamed. I mean, you, yes, you could. But for t shrimp cocktail, I'm, I'm using the Louisiana hot sauce as the carrier. And to tell you the honest truth, these shrimp have so much flavor because they're so fresh. They're really buttery. They're nutty. They're sweet. They're um, really very delicious. So you don't need a whole lot. But you can, you can dress them up. You can put Cajun spices on it. Oh, 220. Wow. Chris, you're going to have to teach me your 90-second shrimp thing. Okay, they're done. Stop the watch. Beautiful. Okay, I see, I see a couple maybe that are underdone, but I didn't want the other ones to get too cooked. I want to keep them as the letter C. Okay, let's go over here. Put them on ice for a minute. Actually, I want to keep this boiling because we've got another dish we're going to make. Take the steamer out. Okay, let's finish our shrimp cocktail dish. Now, when you're at home, you could put your shrimp in the fridge or in the freezer just to kind of stop it from cooking. I mean, that's the main thing. Because shrimp cocktail is typically served cold. Um, it doesn't have to be, but that's traditionally how it's done. So here we go. Beautiful shrimp. These shrimp are a count of about 26. That means that there's 26 to the pound. So this amount of shrimp would be good. One pound at 26 would probably be good for four to six people. Let's put it just one more over here. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Okay, our first dish. There we go. <laughs> You'll get a chance. All right, so we're on to the next recipe. If you look at your page two, we're going to do the whole shrimp Asian style. How many of you like to eat shrimp with the heads on? Well, I see all of these guys over here. And you know why they're raising their hand? Because they can, they can try the shrimp with the heads on, and they know how yummy it is because it seals in all of the flavor into the shrimp. So it's not typical for Americans to eat heads on. Um, but today I'm going to show you a really nice recipe for that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring this back up to a boil again. Ooh, good. So you can see that we, this pot has this other liner in it. See, it's, so we can also do boiling shrimp too. And what we need for that is ginger. So I have prepared some fresh ginger. Ginger looks like this, and I took a piece of ginger, you peel it with a regular peeler, and then you take that and you slice it, and so that's what this ginger is all about. So we're going to put that in the water, so we are going to flavor this one. And then it calls for scallions. Oops or green onions, right? I use everything, uh, even these little tiny pieces at the, at the end. I mean, why not, right? Just use it all. So, um, so I've cut them diagonally, right? There's all the pieces. That's going to go in here, too. And now for the most important 
ingredient, what would that be? A little bit of wine. White wine. There we go. I'm trying to save enough so I can have a glass when I'm done. <laughs> okay. Bring that back up to a boil while we get our heads on shrimp. There you go. Now the heads on shrimp are also very big shrimp. They're 26, 35s, and that's how many there are to a pound. These shrimp were also harvested this morning, so look how beautiful they are. Can you see that? You want a little anatomy lesson before we eat the shrimp? Yeah, sure. Okay, the shrimp have two parts to them, see? They have the, the head and they have the rest of the tail. So it has two parts to it. It's got these little simmer, swimmerettes to help them move through the water and then for the female she carries her eggs under there. They've got walking legs, right? They've got the long antenna, the little eyes. They've also got this very sharp thing called a rostrum or a beak and that helps to protect them from predators. Maybe also from running into things, I don't know. But um, So that's your shrimp. Good? Okay. Let me see if there's a little thing in here. Yeah. I just want to pull this out so it doesn't end up in, the, in our dish. Okay, this is going to cook a lot faster, right? Because they're on, it's on contact. And I think we'll go for 90 seconds on this, Chris. All right, you're going to help me with this one. Because they turn pink really quickly. Okay, here we go. Somebody timing again? Got it. Got it? Thank you. Now, of course, the water's going to slow down. I'm just breaking them apart a little bit. See how beautiful and pink they are already? So, of course, they're not done. So we will go for, we'll, we'll keep an eye on them, but we'll probably go for close to a 90 second to two minutes on this one. Come on. We need you boiling. It's looking good. Uh, we'll take a quick peek in there, Brian. Oh. <laughs> I know. I know. I can't help but look. <laughs> I'm really glad it has a glass top, though. I mean, seriously, right? All right, I'll busy myself over here. Get the plate ready. Okay, how are we doing, timer? 104, 105, 106. Wow, Chris, they're looking good. What do you think? Longer? A little bit more? More? <laughs> I want to overcook it. 130, 90 seconds. But I did take the, the lid off. Okay, he says they're done. Let's just take another piece. See, they do look like the letter C, right? Look at that one. That's a C. All right. You could, actually, they do have heads on frozen. And, and really, the only way to eat heads on is fresh. You really, I mean, fresh or freshly frozen. You know what, Brian? I think I need my gloves here. Yes. So you can buy them from the Florida Organic Aquaculture Farm with the heads on, but they're typically going to sell them to you frozen, right? More or less, unless you do a special order for heads on. But you do have to cook them. You can? You can uh, sign up for their newsletter or their Facebook when you leave here today. And when they have a batch like this, look how beautiful this turned out. Wow. Oh, yum. Okay, so we're going to make these. This is Asian style. So we're going to make some dipping sauce for them. We're going to follow the recipe. The recipe said 
two tablespoons of soy, one, two, and it says some, some hot water, so we're going to use some of this delicious water in the shrimp, right? So if you were making this dish for a number of people, you'd make like more dipping sauce, one for each person. And then we have one more ingredient, rice vinegar, brown rice vinegar. There we go. And I'd like to add one more ingredient, some chives, because they look so pretty on there. Let's use my little scissors here. A little snip. Look at that. It's pretty, right? Maybe one more. Now really pretty. Okay, let's put this in here. Make room shrimp. There we go. Oh, you know, I have a shrimp joke for you. <laughs> I forgot to tell the four o'clock group, so don't tell the four o'clock that I forgot to tell them this joke. So why didn't the shrimp share its treasure? Because it was a little shellfish. Uh, If you like that one, I have one more, one more to tell you, but I'll save it. Okay, oh, wait, wait, we forgot to get the finished look. What do you think? Okay, I like that. Okay, so we're going to cook shrimp and grits. I cook the grits ahead of time, and I, um, I use the white, corn grits, but you can also use yellow grits. So I like them both, but get the coarse ones because they're really flavorful. Now in your recipe it says you can add cheese to it, right? This cheese is a mixture of Romano and also cheddar cheese. You can also add butter to it, but to tell you the honest truth, when you see how rich this recipe is, I don't think you want to put butter in, in there. This doesn't have anything in it right now. I did make it one of my favorite um, cooking instruments is a whisk. So when I made the grits a little earlier, I just uh, stirred them up with the grits and that helped them from sticking on the bottom and also kept them really fluffy and flavorful. So what we're going to do now is actually cook the shrimp that's going to go on the grits. So let's fire this baby up. Okay, so do you think this is a ridiculous amount of butter? A half a pound? No, it's not a ridiculous amount? My four o'clock group was just appalled that I would put that much butter in here. I, I it, it, it seems like a lot, doesn't it? No? Oh, okay. No, we're going to go with that. What I have to do for the 4 o'clock is we had to cut it in half and we added olive oil. And so that actually is an option is you could do it all with olive oil. You don't have to use butter. It is really rich. Um, this is a... Should I, should I take some out? <laughs> you guys are great. I like the 8 o'clock crowd. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I should put butter in the grits and <laughs> cheese in there. Okay, so anyway, um, back to the cooking. Okay, so garlic, number one ingredient, important ingredient here. I'm going to put in a lot of yummy garlic, right? Mm-hmm. Now, do you all know about the garlic press? Have you ever used a garlic press? You put the garlic in like this, right? And then you squeeze it like that. Really easy, isn't it? I like the garlic press. Okay, that's a lot of garlic. That's more than the recipe says, but you can't have too much garlic. Okay, so we have garlic. Can somebody read me the rest of the re recipe? Green onions. 
Ooh, look at that. Doesn't that look yum? Ooh. Okay, green onion. They were diced ahead of time, the same. We're going to put some of those in there. Okay. What else? Cherry tomatoes? Okay, that was my addition to this recipe because I love cherry tomatoes. All right. Then let's get the shrimp ready. Where's, here it is. Now this shrimp is going to be different. It's going to be totally peeled and deveined, and they're a little smaller. The count is 36.45, which makes sense for a grit, for, you know, shrimp and grits. Now shrimp and grits is such a famous southern dish. I think Charleston is, like, famous for their shrimp and grits, right? Yeah. No, I, you know, I really don't when they're already been processed so beautifully at the farm. Now, maybe from the grocery store, things like that, you might want to. But these ones, straight out of the packet, straight in there, because they've been really nicely handled. All right, let's make sure we have the rest of our ingredients handy. We're going to need some pepper, some salt, some cayenne. Lemon. Good, good. And white wine. I don't know. <laughs> All right, here we go. Somebody can time this too, but you know, to tell you the truth, it's a lot easier cooking the stir fry because you can be up close and personal with it. Doesn't that look yum? Okay, so we're going to put some pepper on it. All right? We're going to put, what does it say, like two pinches of cayenne? That seems like a lot. So I'm just going to put a nice, healthy sprinkle. Do you like cayenne? Yeah. yeah. Then we're going to put a pinch of salt or two. Actually, that's a pretty big pinch. Okay. Check the flame. Do you think it needs to be higher? Yeah. I, okay, thanks. God, you guys are great. You're great chefs, great chef, chef helpers. Look at that. It's, I did. I, it did need to be higher. And we still have a couple ingredients, right? We still have the lemon. The wine. I was hoping you would forget the wine. I want a glass. Anyway, we'll put some in definitely. Now the four o'clock group kept on saying more, more. So we'll see if you think I've added enough. What do you think? No? No, no. I'm putting this over here now. <laughs> All right, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. Just lovely. So this is a pretty quick dish when you think about it. Oh, it smells good. Can you smell it? Yeah. yeah. All right, this is going to be our last dish of the evening. And then I have two slides, two or three slides to show you about the healthy benefits of shrimp. And so we'll be wrapping up with that, and then um, we can have a few questions too. Okay, so this is a good, hearty meal here. Look at that. Okay, there's your grits, right? There's your grits. Here's the shrimp. We got a... Wow, so I think for a serving, that's probably pretty darn good. <laughs> right? That might be a serving for two. <laughs> yeah, a few more scallions here to make it pretty. All right, we need another sprig of parsley. Another tiny wedge of lemon. 
because somebody that's eating this could put the lemon right on. How's that look? Okay. <laughs> that would be fun. All right, so I have um, just, uh, like I said, just a couple more slides, and then we could um, we could have a little bit of discussion if you'd like. I'm just trying to find my. There it is. So I wanted to let you know we talked about the shrimp from the farm and that it doesn't have any additives. It has a little bit of ascorbic acid or vitamin C to preserve its freshness, but it doesn't have the additives that you find typically in a lot of your um, shrimp that are that are caught wild. And, or even some of the aquaculture shrimp for that matter. Um, sodium bisulfate is used to freeze it at sea, you know, so that it doesn't have any what we call black spots or mel uh, melanosis. And so that's a pretty typical way of, of, of all the shrimp that you see here probably had that process done to it. Now the sodium tripolyphosphate is typically used for shrimp to retain the moisture. So when you buy those shrimp rings, they've typically put um, this particular preservative, which is, it's, quote, safe for human consumption. It's just that when they use it really high, like high amounts, what it does is it actually increases the moisture content of your product. And so therefore, when you go to buy the shrimp, you're actually buying some water along with the shrimp. But some people are really sensitive to this, especially when it's used in, in very large amounts. So if you have sort of a, like a reaction to shrimp, um, it could be partially due to sodium tripolyphosphate. It could just be that you're allergic to shellfish. So I'm not going to make any speculation there. All I'm saying is that the shrimp that you get like this, you don't need that, that STP in it. I mean, you just don't need to preserve the moisture because they're already beautifully fresh. So that just gives you an idea on that. I just briefly want to talk about cholesterol. That's why a lot of people don't want to eat shrimp. They say, oh my God, shrimp are so high in cholesterol. Well, it is true. They are high in cholesterol, but the good thing is, is that they're low in fat. And because they're low in fat, your body doesn't absorb the cholesterol. In fact, from studies, what they found is that it actually improves the ratio of your LDL to HDL, your good to bad, um, and also lowers your triglycerides. So it's actually a very healthy um, protein to eat. It low in fat, as I said, low in calories, unless you cook it in that butter there, of course. <laughs> um, it's definitely a heart healthy and anti-inflammatory with the omega-3 fatty acids, right? It's great. It's really rich in minerals because think about all the things that it eats. It's got antioxidants. It's got your zinc, your copper, your selenium. It's got your B12, your vitamin D. It's like a little nutrition nugget right there. And they're low in mercury because of the fact that they, um, I mean, they're low on the food chain. So it's really the higher up the food chain you go, the more mercury you get in your, in your seafood. I want to thank a lot of people that helped me with this presentation. I had family, friends, coworkers, and people that I just stopped on the street and said, is there anything you'd like to know about shrimp? <laughs> And so actually, I got this big whole long list of questions, and that helped me to put the presentation together. So I hope that I was able to answer a lot of questions that you all have. Um, of course, um, big, big, a big thank you again to Florida Organic Aquaculture, um, the team over here, and especially Chris and Melissa, who stood by my side for the last couple of weeks helping me. And Clifford Morris is the, is the founder and president of Florida Organic Aquaculture. We've had a long, a long time partnership with FOA, and so it's very exciting to, to do this project together as well. Krabby Bills helped um, me um, with these wild shrimp examples. And then John Reed, of course, a special thank you to John for um, talking with us about um, some of the fishing practices. And Brian Cousin, of course, my videographer. Yay, Brian. And tonight we have Jim Masterson, who's filming this. This will be on video on our website. So you'll be able to go back and review some of the things that we talked about. And then Jill Sunderland's working behind the scenes, and she is so wonderful all day today helping me to prepare for um, this evening's uh, presentation. So with that, I have one more question for you. 
Will you eat more shrimp now? Oh, yeah. Yeah.